Hello friends, fans, and fellow nerds. Welcome to Gaming and Gabbing, a podcast recorded live on Twitch, interviewing voiceover actors and other nerdy creatives. I'm your host and podcast president, Diane Hutton, aka Dabraham underscore Lincoln on Twitch. I am the voice of Kate Marsh, Alyssa, and Juliet in the original Life is Strange, and I have so many friends in the industry who are marvelous and talented, and I can't wait to share them with you. Head over to twitch.tv slash Dabraham underscore Lincoln to catch live streams and get the chance to have your questions answered live by my guests. Our very first guest is Valerie Rose Lohman, aka the Edith Finch in What Remains of Edith Finch. And she's also Jess in the new Wolfenstein Youngblood. Unfortunately, this interview was recorded before her involvement was announced, so we will just be focusing on Edith Finch. I hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, thank you for coming to the stream tonight. Um, we have special guest Valerie Rose Lohman with us, who is the voice of Edith Finch from What Remains of Edith Finch. And I've got some questions. I've got some questions for you. Because uh, I want to know more about this stuff. And I mean, as a fellow voice actor, I think it's always fun to kind of see what your experience is like versus what my experience is like. And we've got some fun questions, too, that we got from, like, Twitter and Instagram awesome. and some special Discord questions. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I'm excited. So um, I, I figured I'd start it off kind of easy and, like, little getting-to-know-you questions. Right. Right. <laughs> so what is your favorite color? Oh, probably, probably maybe pink or purple. Okay. A very girly. It kind of depends on my mood. Yeah, pink or purple. That's good. That's good. I like that. Um, they're just we've just got some favorites up for it. Uh, favorite animal. Dogs. I'm a big dog person. If anyone follows me on Twitter, that's like all I post is dogs. And if anyone it, watching saw how bright her face just got and she just smiled, her face like lit up when she started talking about dogs. We rate dogs is like my favorite thing in the world. Have you followed their Twitter? No. Oh gosh. Okay. Oh, All right. It's the best. Little plug for, yeah. what was it again? We, at We Rate Dogs. We Rate Dogs. And all the dogs get great rating. <clears throat> oh, rate. Okay. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, it's like the, it's the purest thing on the internet. Okay. <laughs> well, definitely is to save that for like when I'm feeling down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, and favorite food? This is the last favorites question. So. Oh, um, artichoke dip, which I can't always eat because I have a dairy allergy, but sometimes I'll forego that. This is the best food in the world. I mean, artichokes in general, I'm a big fan. Yeah, any, any way an artichoke is, yeah. is great. It's, it's like, you're really rewarded for going through all that trouble, I feel yeah. like. This is, they better be good. Oh, yeah. Because you're doing a lot of work. You get to, like, 60 layers of leaves, and then you finally get to the heart. And then you have to scrape off all that hair yeah. and stuff. And it's a, it's a job. Yeah. So, it's a whole job. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I'm glad we have that in common. Yeah. Love that. Okay. Um, oh, and so today, uh, during the stream, uh, any donations made are going to your charity of choice. And so I wanted you to explain a little bit about what charity you chose and why. Oh, okay. I chose the It Gets Better Project. Um, I just love everything they stand for. I love how they are uh, big proponents of letting people come out in a positive space and letting young young people and people people of all ages really feel accepted for coming out and I just everything they do is so wonderful and heartwarming and uh, they really have been fighting for more equal representation in film and in media and I just love that so that's awesome that was as soon as you asked me that I was like it gets better project we have to so perfect I was perfect. very excited yeah that's great I didn't know that they were like foraying into um like tv film like fighting for equal, like they're, representation they're always every time like a movie comes out featuring like strong LGBTQ characters they always do like a big email blast and like rally to get people in the theater because at the end of the day like the dollars and the people in the seats are what changes the industry and yeah it, absolutely it gets gets more things made yeah so. no that's great I, I love that they do that that's yeah. a fun little fact I just learned yeah, there you go. so um how long have you been acting and like what's your like origin story with the bug that people always talk about biting them like when did that okay so I started pretty young I started around like I was a really handy kid and my sister is 10 years older than me she and she's an opera singer oh awesome so when she started doing like theater and stuff when she was 16 and I was seven I was like 
I want to do that. I want to be like Brooke because like I wanted to just be my sister. So that was kind of how it started. And then I did theater for a long time. I went to Orange County High School of the Arts. And then uh, I booked a regional production of The Wizard of Oz when I was 15. And I left art school and I said, I don't need to finish regular high school. I'll just study school online and like start acting professionally. So that's kind of what I just started doing at 15, 16. My parents supported it. And that's so awesome. far it has not failed. Great. So perfect. We're in a good place. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> love a positive story. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I've only been doing film. I've been doing film and TV probably for like the last five ish years, and voiceover has been the most recent. I've only been doing it. I think I booked my first job in 2015. Okay. So I'm kind of, definitely more recent. Than, All right. Than not. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, oh, that was what it, that works perfect. Like uh, I wanted to know, was Edith Finch your first voiceover role? No, I actually okay. started. Uh, my first couple jobs were like doing dubbing for foreign language things like I've I, always wanted to do that it's so fun like how do I get that job I want it <laughs> I got literally got mine on actors access with my crappy reel that I sent them um yeah I've worked I worked a lot with a studio in Hollywood called Sound Chef and I did like a I du- my the favorite thing I dubbed was like a Dutch Nickelodeon show oh. for like internal purposes that's amazing that was so fun and we got to which I've never had for a dubbing job, they invited the whole cast, and we all got to, like, watch it together. Um, Yeah, I did a lot of that, and then I did a couple anime pilots with a company that is no longer in existence. Um, Yeah, so those those were the two biggies, and then Edith Finch came around, and it just kind of happened, I guess. It just happened. It just happened. All right. Well, okay. So it just happened. Like, what? So what does that mean? So how was how was your audition process for that? And because yeah. I know when people ask me that for Life is Strange, my story is kind of underwhelming. So I'm like, what's your story? Okay. <laughs> okay. First off, I'm gonna ask you later what yours is because I'm curious. Um. So for me, I sought an actor's access, and I just submitted my headshot and my my really old again the same old voiceover reel that I made myself with the help of a friend and I did a self-tape I did the first section of the game where she sees the house for the first time and then the end which not to spoil I don't spoil anything for you but if you've seen the game it's uh it's like her farewell speech so I did both of those and then I sent them in and I didn't hear anything for like three weeks and then they put me on a veil and then I got an email at like 11 p.m. or midnight and they offered it to me and I only did the game I think in four sessions, three or four sessions in total. So, and I had no idea that it was going to be like on PlayStation. I thought it was this tiny, tiny, tiny indie game. Oh, same. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what is this? That's, and then, and then the PlayStation trailer came out and I was like, oh, this is like a real game. (laughs) This is like a deal and maybe even a big deal (laughs) yeah exactly and I freaked out so yeah it was like a really simple audition process but when I I remember when I was reading for it I remember thinking to myself because the script is just so good and that's thanks to like Ian Dallas and the whole creative team I just remember being like wow this is weird and fabulous and Edith had the weirdest character description she was called like Edith is a storm that may never reach the shore, but may. It was like the most like metaphorical, weird character description. Yeah, I loved wow. it. Helpful. What Very. a helpful, helpful description. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> okay, so a lot of the things you said, I kind of wanted to go over. So I have to like go back because I actually so going back to you going to OSHA yes. at school. So. I almost went there. No way. Or I thought, I thought about going there. Okay. Really, rather. Because I also grew up in Orange County. Yeah. And so it's this big performing arts, like middle school and high school, that's like a big old deal and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And I think what happened is I remember going to like an orientation or, or an informational thing. And I've, I've done theater my whole life, but I've never been able to stand all of the theater people. (laughs) 
And so I went and I was like, this place is pretentious. No thanks. <laughs> but that is just me. Like, it's a oh great gosh. school. And I know a lot of people that went there and probably got amazing educations. And, like, I would have too. But, it, I, you know, like, 13-year-old me was like, plus I'd gone to the same school from kindergarten to eighth grade. And okay. I, I almost went to a lot of high schools. But I just ended up not being able to leave all the people I knew. I just couldn't. I was too scared. I'd gone to the same private high school for nine years I like wasn't ready to leave yeah um but yeah uh <laughs> that's a that's an accurate assessment of OSHA um yeah and then the rest of my high school career like anytime we would be driving and I'd see someone with the like OSHA stickers on their car I'd be like oh it's OSHA <laughs> I'm the worst. Not to bad, like, great school, great people. I, yes. At the time, just wasn't about it. <laughs> See, it worked for me because I have uh, really mellowed up the last couple years, but when I was 13, I was the perkiest, most bubbly person. I wore dresses every day to school. Like, I, I like, rainbows came out of my ears like I I just was like a sparkle princess every single day um so it worked for my energy level yeah that's great because I had energy to spare yeah <laughs> and I had a lot of it so. absolutely I'm I'm like this weird like I am I like being positive I love rainbows and sparkles and unicorns but at the same time there's this part of me that's just like such April Ludgate <laughs> from Parks and Rent that I'm just like no so it's like I'm weird. I'm a I got both in me. I'm like that now. If if I met me, if I met 13-year-old me now, I'd probably like have to like shake her by the shoulders and be like, "Calm down. Calm down, please." I'm just like so different now. It's really weird. Hey, that happens. Yeah, it happens. We, we, all, we grow, we sure. change. We go through puberty. Things happen. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um I just really wanted to mention that because when I, I think I was looking at your website or something and I saw it, but it, the ocean, I was like, that's funny. Yep. Um, speaking of you being a sparkly princess, um, <laughs> you love Disney and you, yeah. Disneyland, right? Yeah. Another thing we can connect on. Yes. So, favorite princess? I'm a big Snow White girl. Okay. But that's probably because I want to play her at some point. That makes sense. That's You've like, got the pale skin, dark yeah. hair thing happening for you. Yeah, that's the dream role. Um, but growing up, I loved Aurora. I just thought Aurora was like so pretty and sang so beautifully and was just, she's kind of, she's really sassy. She's, it's she's, been a while since I've seen that movie, so yeah. I'll take your word for it. She's she's like really sassy with her fairy godmothers, and I I just awesome. I'm I'm all for a princess with personality. I mean, yes, please, <laughs> more of that, more mm -hmm. of that. Backtracking even further, I guess, to when you were talking about your charity, the not your charity, but charity of choice rather. I ran in to um, Katra on set and she was telling me about Clexicon oh, and yes. so I wanted to bring that up and I wanted you to kind of like explain and talk about it because I had never heard of it and when she was telling me about it I was like this is the coolest thing ever why do I not know about this convention dude okay so I discovered Clexicon when we went to a live taping of one day at a time and because it features a queer storyline Isabella Gomez who plays Elena had invited all the uh, people who organized this big convention in Vegas. It's called Clexicon. It's for uh, queer ladies in multimedia, film, TV, anything like that, and video games too. Um, and they do an annual convention in Vegas. And so we went, and I got a I got a free ticket, which was awesome. And my girlfriend and Katra and I drove down there, and we spent four days seeing like our favorite shows favorite showrunners, actors, and it was just really wonderful because it was very creative based. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of, um, it was a lot of filmmakers and, and writers. And I thought that was really cool because I've never been to a convention that was very creator oriented. Okay. So yeah. it's, I, to, to me, everything's always very fan based. And yes. that was, that yes. was really cool. I really enjoyed that. And then I, it looks like, no promises yet, but we're trying to, I'm trying to be on a panel next year. Yes. Um, the voice, there was like a voiceover panel. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it looks like I may get to be a guest next year, which I would That's love. That's awesome. Yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah. I would really love it. I loved going. So. Yeah. It sounds awesome. I, yeah. When she was telling me, I was just like, this is awesome. And so, um, 
she mentioned that the name is a ship name from like the first yeah it's i think it's from the 100 i think it's i think it's like a character's name like alexa and clark i i've never seen the 100 okay, okay. but apparently there's like a big thing and like one of them dies and it's like a big it's like a big thing in the community okay I, again haven't watched it but that's okay. where it stems from so so the name of the con is a ship name but we're just unclear Got well, it. yes exactly it. exactly <laughs> so yeah but like my favorite like i love watching like marvel's runaways and uh winona earp one day at a time they were all there so very cool it was great i tried i need to try and get into winona earp again because i watched the pilot and i was a little bit like what this is what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. I love it though. <laughs> so I need to try. I have a good friend who loves it, so I I need to, I need to try again. It's yeah. it's it's fun. I mean, I'm a big fantasy person, and it's like goes wild. So perfect. Yeah, perfect. Mental health. That's a big thing I uh, deal with on my channel. I don't deal with, but support and try and break stigmas down because we need to. Yes. <laughs> so we do. I uh, can going along with charity then everything's going along with something mm -hmm. Try, look at me trying so hard to like interview what am I doing I don't <laughs> doing know doing really great oh, thank you <laughs> um is there any kind of thing that for you that like you've struggled with and overcame that maybe you have advice for others in dealing with it like I know for me it's like anxiety I only realized like the last year two years that I actually had it and should medicate it <laughs> and it made such a big difference and so I I'm always talking about that. I, that says like, so, so I'm trying to like figure out how to like formulate my answer. I, I should like have sent you this ahead so, of time. <laughs> so much. No, I think it's, I think it's so important. Um, I think the biggest thing, because I struggle with anxiety and a little bit of depression. Um, and I think the biggest advice I would say is what's worked for me has been a lot of self-reflection and knowing whether or not uh, medication is a good choice for me or if, if other things are beneficial to me, I have found a lot of, um, I have found that certain things spark my anxiety, like social media mm -hmm. and, and com like playing the comparison game. Oh God, yeah. And things like that. that. Rough. And especially as an actor, I have, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. yeah. So I, it's been, it's been finding what triggers, because it, if something really triggers me, then I'm, I'm like irritated for days and it's just a spiral of insanity. So it's been finding those triggers and then turning them off and getting away from them. So I've really been trying to like start my mornings with no social media and I do a lot of journaling. I do a lot of gratitude journaling because I feel like that grounds me and centers me mm -hmm. and keeps me focused on the positive. Yeah. Um, so, and obviously my journey is not everyone's got a different yeah you, if different things work for different people and it's all about exploring what works for you exactly and I just like sharing because there's always like oh I never thought of that like a friend of mine she streams um anxiety she does a lot of mental health talking and she posted something on Twitter earlier that was um she was saying when at the end of a day that's fine like it's not necessarily an exceptional day but like it was a good day mm -hmm. nothing but like she was like write down everything that made that day a good enough day and then when that. you start feeling depressed go over that list and um look at what it, the, the things and be and see have you done any of them today can you do any of them now and kind of just trying to get you from bad to okay like and not like yeah. trying to really like not trying to do any huge work but just a little baby little steps bits. baby yeah. steps and I love that because a lot of my depression will flare up because I'm a workaholic. <laughs> and at certain points, I feel like I've never done enough. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Because I like that. Yeah, so that's that's uh, on Twitch. Plug for anxiety. I'm going to drop her tag in there because she's great. Um, and that was her little tip for today. And I retweeted it and was like, uh, absolutely, yeah. this is gold. The end. That's fabulous. <laughs> So, well, thank you. That was, of I like that a lot. I, yeah, I've, I feel that just knowing the triggers and avoiding or mm -hmm. being able to step away before you start spiraling. Like, I have people that I'll like, if I start, I, I like go to them and I'm like, this is starting and I need you to like 
slap me with your words like yeah. verbally slap me out of this before I go in that down that hole <laughs> oh yeah I, I I will ask like my girlfriend like hey let's keep let's like let's talk about like positive things or 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 like puppies let's look at puppies <laughs> let's look at puppies right or now. or like I, it has gotten to the point where like if certain people I am all about being very aware of the world and like being on top of the news oh, and things God. like that but I also the news is such a trash the, the news is such a trash <laughs> fire so I've also like I've unfollowed the people who post like the most awful things all the time, and that's uh, the only thing they ever post. Because mm-hmm. I just, I can be informed Fill your space without with positivity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's a big thing because I feel like the trash fire can feed sadness. Yes, it can. It yep. does. It's like oxygen. It eats up. Yes. <laughs> the sadness is what I don't know. I tried there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, so back to more Edith Finch specific okay. questions, since that's what we're going going with today. Um, from what from us talking, I've gathered that you have played it before. I have. How many times have you played it? Because I know I've played Life is Strange a lot. <laughs> okay, I played it once when the game came out. I played. Ha- I guess this will be my third time. Okay. Third, yeah, third right. foray into it. I've only think played it once fully through when I first did it, and then I only okay. got through half with. Uh, with Shelby and Ella. Yeah, okay. Yes, she was on Shella Games, other Twitch friends. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and plug those in the Twitch chat. Um, we also love Shella Games. We, we stan, do. as the kids say, we stan Shella what, what Games. What does that mean? All right, so. <laughs> people keep saying that. They, had to, they had to educate me. Um, and now I'll educate you, and I'll probably mess it up. <laughs> it means to be like a super fan of something, and it's from an Eminem song. Okay. It's like an, Stan was the name of like an obsessive friend or okay. not friend, fan, and his name was Stan. And so now we say I stand for things. Okay. That works. I I I thought at first that it was like we stand for it, like I stand for that. Yeah. Apparently it's not that simple. It's man's name from an Eminem song. Huh. I thought it was always like like Super fan, but then there's yeah, it tea, is. So. It is like super fan, yeah. yeah. So the more you know, okay, <laughs> great. Obsessive fan base. I, I don't know, but <laughs> it is kind of like people use it in less obsessive terms, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> it's a cool thing now. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool thing. Yeah, <laughs> I want to know because you got to go to the Baftas. I did, and I'm super. Jealous slash excited for you that Thank you got you. to do that. What was that like? Tell me everything. <laughs> um, well, the whole t- – okay, so my dad went with me. He didn't go to the event. Okay. He didn't go to the events. He, like, ran around London by himself. Why not? We, we have family there. Yeah. Um, it was my first time out of the country uh, ever. Congrats. Except for Tijuana when I was, like, six. But sure. And so you went specifically, like – For this. You were nominated. You guys went. And we, we like – made a whole week out of it of course we visited where my grandmother lived like perfect excuse it was so vacation so cool um uh i felt kind of like a fish out of water because there's all these people that like obviously i researched everyone and they're just so like like abu from assassin's creed and 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 the ladies from uh, Uncharted and 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 then Melina from Hellblade and I I had met I had met Melina before we were in New York together okay. for the New York Game Awards but Melina only came for the actual BAFTAs so we didn't get to hang out the rest of the time so the whole time I was just like freaking out and like having like internal geek- geeking out everywhere sure so it was a very intense exciting experience um this is such a weird little thing, but my favorite thing about the BAFTAs is that on your seat, you get, at the awards, you get a little box of chocolates. <laughs> and there is, like, a milk chocolate, a dark chocolate, and a white chocolate. And they're the little BAFTA masks in chocolate form, and they're called Tiddly BAFTAs. And I just think it's so funny. I what? kept the box. <laughs> I just think, I don't know. Also, they're really heavy. The BAFTAs are really heavy. Oh, okay. They're like 30 pounds. That's excessive. Yeah. So you could you could seriously lift weights with them. That's, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that sounds awesome. I know, because um, I'm friends with uh, Sissy Jones, okay. um, who is in Life is Strange, and like I know she usually goes to those, and I'm just like, oh, that's so cool. Like yeah. I would love one of, one of these days, guys. 
we're you all, will. We're, you we're, will you're going it. back. I'm going. It's happening. It's, it's so cool. You will love it. You will love it. Um, and everyone's really nice. Good. Because everyone there is a fan. Like, I remember meeting people that I had only interacted with on Twitter. Um, and, like, meeting everyone in person. Everyone's, like, so supportive. I've experienced that as well with any other voice actors I've met. They're, they're all so supportive. Mm-hmm. And, um... Gosh, like, Sissy, I want her to be my second mom. Like, <laughs> she's so awesome. I'm like, tell me everything about this life. I would just sit there and listen to her talk forever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I agree. Everyone I've met is so supportive and kind as well. That's what I love about the VO community. It's not, it's not, no one's really, no one's mean. Everyone's chill and, I don't know. And everyone plays each other's projects, which I love. Yeah, we're everyone's nerds. We're yeah, all nerds. We're exactly. all nerds. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get into some of the uh, fan questions. Ooh, okay. I'm going to start with my, my Discord loves. Those are my subs in the Discord. So, and I think while she's here, while she asks, how much, if any, of your lines were ad-libbed? Were you allowed to go off script, or did you have to stick, like, strictly to the script? I, I don't, I don't think I ad-libbed anything. There may have been, like, a couple, like, word swaps, but sure. very, very minimal. Because the game is so well-crafted, and by the time I'd gotten into it, like, that script was solid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you usually don't know enough context to ad-lib. Like, yeah. you're not, you don't know what else is going on. And- no, and I had no idea, like, who everyone was. So yeah. So that was the hardest thing, because, because it's so story-based, and there's, like, what you play like 10 relatives stories okay and I didn't really get to hear their whole story until I actually played the game Mm -hmm. so it was very very on script for the most part yeah I remember like because we recorded different um like the different episodes in different months and chunks of time and I remember just being so confused at the like last doing voice over for the last episode I literally looked at the director at one point was like what is happening in this game? <laughs> like, what the things I'm saying are so weird. I don't understand what's happening. And he's just like, "Oh man, like you don't even, you're not even ready." I was like, oh, "Okay." Gosh. So there was no, no ad libbing. Not really. All right. Not on this one. That's. I mean, that makes sense. The scripts are so tight. I don't think there's much room. I. But you know, what do I know? Maybe some people do ad lib. I. My last project had had some had some like fun little but like little things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, just kind it makes of sense ends. it makes sense so ethan from chicago asked well first said congrats on the bafta nomination thank you ethan <laughs> do you think the oscars will ever give out awards for best interactive film or best performer in an interactive film um they should because uh england is kicking our butt with that and and they're like so ahead of the times i mean why do we not have them? I mean, Italy has a like a inter, like a national game award as well. Why don't we have one? I mean, we yeah, have like weird. little ones. Like there's the New York, not little New York Game Awards is awesome, and like we have the LA ones. Um, but we, I mean, the Baftas is like I'm pretty sure like Emma Thompson has a Baf- has a Bafta award. Yeah, like, yeah. Come on, people. So I, I think the Oscars should. Yeah, they should. Well, they should have a lot of things. But. Especially because they, they, I know, casting directors, I mean, oh, we're so Oh, don't on even that. get me started on, um, and our, yeah, oof, oof. But, but especially that more and more big actors are doing video games like Ellen Page and Willem Dafoe, like. It's clearly yeah, acting, guys. Like, there's clearly there's acting going on. real actors in it. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, well, we'll yeah. we're, we're waiting for it. We, yes. We want it. Yeah, we're waiting for we're it. We're waiting. So, BoilerFan18 asks, this might be a dumb question, but how much character information are you given for voice acting? Do the writers have a backstory made up, or do you have to think of details yourself? Um, for the most part, I think I get all of it. Um, some things are super under wraps. Some th- I mean, sometimes they, they just, like, tell you who you are, how old you are, and what's happening in this specific thing, Mm -hmm. especially, like, especially when you audition for, like, bigger things. Oh, yeah. You have no idea what the heck it is. Mm -hmm. Um, For Edith Finch, they gave me a lot because, obviously, it's a very history-driven game, and she has lived through a lot. Um, And then the last project I did, they gave me a lot of backstory. Um, Yeah, so I think for the the most part. I like getting to make up stuff, though. (laughs) When it's something that's, like, you have less info. I love getting to make up like 
weird little things. Yeah. Well, that makes it's, sense. It's fun. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. So um, Trev asks, um, they all say hi. So he said, hey, Valerie, <laughs> um, when recording, did you get to see the whole script and recording? Did you know the context of all the lines? So it's kind of like the other question, but a little different. Uh, no, I did not get the whole script. And I remember being so confused because every day that I'd go in to record, they'd hand me a new, like, little packet. Sure. And I had to ask, like, who is Barbara? Who is Louis? Uh, who is great grandma Edie to me? And, and I had, I had to ask so many questions. Yeah. Um, which is great because the team knows that story inside and out. Yeah. Yeah. They like to keep in dark, which was a lot of why the strike happened was like, give the actors information they need. It is true. So. You kind of need it to act. You do. It's, you know, that little thing. (laughs) (laughs) It's not hard at all. (laughs) Okay. So last Discord question. Allie wants to know. Would you rather have your own body with the head of a duck or a body of a duck with your own head? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Okay, probably my own head with the body of a duck because that way I could fly. Mm-hmm. I feel like... And the, still act. And still act. You know, I could at least, I could at least you'd voice over niche, act. You'd be very niche, but you'd have... It'd be you'd, very niche. You'd, you'd have some jobs. I'd write my own one-woman show... Yeah. Or oh, you would need to star in the Fringe Festival. You would, yeah, yeah. You would have your own billing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that so. Joke. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. That's Sorry, okay. it's been a long so you, day. Even though you wouldn't have a bill because it's your face, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. So you'd still have a bill, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, moving on. Um, on Twitter, Joseph Gradowski wants to know. And I'm excited for this question. Okay. Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, or Ravenclaw? Discuss. Proud Ravenclaw. Me too! Yes! High five. Oh, yeah. Proud <laughs> Ravenclaw. I have all my gear uh, from Harry Potter World. So, same. Same. Yeah, we I, need to go. We do. Yes. I just got a universal pass. Okay. Yeah. Great. Let's go. Yes. Down. Okay. Down. Yeah. I'm such a proud Ravenclaw. Same here. I'm really like a, a Raven Puff. Like, when I took the quiz, my Hufflepuff was like... Almost, it was like so close. Yeah, and Ravenclaw like just beat it out. So I like, I like to say I'm like, I'm a Ravenclaw. I like being witty and I like books and reading, but like I'm not the the best at it all. Okay, <laughs> like I'm more Luna. There you go. Okay, more Luna than like super studious. I think mine. I think when I took my mixed house, it was a Griff. I think I'm, I'm a Gryffindor. Sure. Yeah. yeah so I got that. I got that little touch of Gryffindor. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So. uh and then, so are there any other, like, fandoms? You're, you're clearly a big fandom into that. You're big into Disney. Are there any other fandoms that uh, you... <laughs> I'm a big Once Upon a Time person. I mean, that makes sense. That's a great show. I'm re-watching it right now because I didn't watch the last two seasons. Sure. So I'm I, like... I agree and just, like, I, I've, I've watched a lot of it and I just, I haven't watched it in years, though. But okay. it's, like, quality bad TV. It's so soapy, and it's I love like it's it so absolutely much. it's a soap opera with Disney characters, yes. and like I'm I love it. Yeah, so. they knew they knew that I was their audience. Yes. So that and I am a I've become a big Star Wars person. Yes. So okay, I'm I love the final trilogy. I'm right. really excited for the last movie. I'm gonna cry. Yeah, it's gonna sure. be great. A lot of people will. I'm very excited, <laughs> and I'm very excited to start for Star Wars World to open. Oh, yeah, that's going to be intense. Yeah. It's going to be really intense. Oh, yeah. It's going to be frightening. <laughs> okay, so I just have a few more questions, and then I want to open up to um, live questions that anyone Ooh. might have, um, because I don't, wanna, I don't want to take this forever. We want to get to the game as well. Mm-hmm. Um, on Instagram, I had a question from Vallum. Vi- Vi- I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry. Um, your, main, your main inspirations in voice acting and favorite video games. Like, Do you have any people that you look up to, that inspire you? Um... Oh gosh! I, oh gosh, that's a it's okay if you question. don't have no, one. I, do. I, I have a weird one. Um, I always really loved Mark Hamill before I realized he like did voiceovers in other sure. things. I was obsessed. I like he's impressive. Up, he's so impressive. I grew up on like Miyazaki films. Love, uh, yeah. And I Castle in the Sky is my favorite. Um, I don't know. He's like got such a good villain voice. And let's see. I mean, I love everyone who's ever voiced a Disney character. Yes. I think Kristen Bell has the cutest voiceover voice. She does. Voice, yeah. So. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. Too many Too many to name. 
Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Um, this is, I don't know if this question will lead to spoilers, but Ariel, uh, dot X, E-X-E asked what your favorite part of the game to play is. Lewis's story. Okay. And I don't want to spoil anything, so Great. that's all I'll say. Okay. It's the hardest to play. Okay. Perfect. And so, uh, Blair, who is one of our lovely mods in chat, wants to know, when you read the concept for Edith Finch, what was your initial reaction? I thought it was so spooky and weird. And I'm into that stuff. Love it. Like, I'm a Tim Burton girl. um, (laughs) And I remember just being like, this sounds like a really weird thing. And uh, there had only been, there had been a concept trailer from, I think, 2015 when I was auditioning for it. Okay. And it had all the art for the house. And I remember thinking, like, this is it just that it was so weird looking, and I liked it. I'm so excited to see what this game has in, in store for me. The house is weird, and there's a lot of Chinese food okay. in there. Great. So. <laughs> um, so to wrap up um, a little bit before we go to audience questions, um, I was wondering if you had, like, any, do you have any projects coming out people can look out for, um, and, like, where else can they find you on the internet, all okay. that kind of stuff. Like, plug yourself, girl. Great. <laughs> okay, so I have something coming out that I can't announce yet, but I'm in, like, the last maybe month of announcing That's crazy it. exciting. So Here follow me online. On Twitter, I'm at Valerie Loman. On Instagram, I'm at Valerie Rose Loman. And on Facebook, I'm Valerie Rose Loman. And I also just kind of started launching a YouTube channel. So Okay, I'm I a- did not get that. I did not put that in the, your links. Okay, it's um, linked on all my other things. Okay. You can find it. Okay. Um, yeah, I've started posting weekly videos. It's uh, it's new. It's new. All right. So I'm having fun. I admire your bravery for Thank delving you. into the YouTubes. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay, so and it's all at... Valerie Loman. Everything is at Valerie Loman. Valerie Rose Loman on most things. Okay. Uh, Twitter's the only one that's at Valerie Loman. Okay, that's... Yeah. Okay. It was... I didn't have enough words I to, understand. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> okay, so let's see, let's see. Let's see if a fun uh, wrap-up question. Let's see. Oh, I guess... What, did you play video games or like were you a fan of gaming before you got into voicing them? So... <laughs> We grew up kind of poor, so we didn't have, like, the newest stuff, sure. but we definitely grew up on, like, my siblings and I, when I say we, <laughs> uh, like, the first generation Sega. Okay. And, like, PlayStation 1. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a mean Mortal Kombat player. Love it. Um, who's your Who's your main? Oh, gosh, I don't know their names. <laughs> I just pick the... I always pick the girl. She's in either pink or blue and has the buns. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh gosh, it's been too long since I played, but I'm a, I'm a button masher. Sure. So I always win. <laughs> um... Which is awful, but I love playing that game. Um, yeah, but my siblings are really good. So I would always get, like, I'd always have to watch because they always wanted to play. Sure, so of course. So now I'm, now I'm getting more into it, of course. Yes. So I just go out Life is Strange, so I'm going to play that this week. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah, you are. I'm excited. Love it. Love it. Okay, and uh, before we uh, – I just keep repeating myself <laughs> – Sorry, podcast listeners. Um, do you have any words of wisdom for like anyone pursuing acting or voice acting or just life advice in general? Oh gosh, life advice would be to drink more water. Oh god, I'm so bad at that. That's uh, that to me is very important. Um, and then acting advice. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I always tell this to people, especially when they want to get into voiceover, to just um know what makes you special and know know what you're bringing to the table because no one is like you and you're not like anyone else mm-hmm. and everyone's voice has a beautiful different quality to it and just know yourself know yourself that's good that's yeah. actually good i'm here sitting over here like that's good advice i need that advice <laughs> <laughs> i just think i just think it helps because then you know and you know how to play to your strengths and yeah. you know what you're going to do Once different. you know what they are, you, yeah. you can figure it out, yeah. Exactly. I, I feel like I'm still figuring it out. Other than, like, being charmingly awkward, I'm not sure what my other strengths are, but... But the crazy thing is, is that we're always... Because we're always changing, and the voice is always changing. Mm-hmm. That, like, 
there's always going to be something new to find. It's true. Which is exciting. It is true. I like that. That's some great advice. I love it. Okay, so let's go to our audience questions. Uh, Celtic Heart wants to know, has anyone ever told you you look like Anna Kendrick? I get that a lot. (laughs) I get that and I get Anne Hathaway. Okay. Yeah, my dad actually had a customer who put two photos of them and like kind of morphed them and put me next to it. So. (gasps) How random. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't know. Awesome. I love them both. (laughs) Question from Elias. Did you start watching Once Upon a Time because of Snow White? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A thousand percent. I love Jennifer Goodwin. I think she's so talented. She's wonderful. The thing about that show, though, that I I totally forgot until just now, it's like someone's always crying. Like there's never an, an episode where at least five people haven't like cried. It is true. And I'm just like, but I still love it because it's like, but it's. But it's Disney characters crying. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. Like, Snow White's a badass. It's, she is. It's all great. She is. Um, Mr. Lenny Shelby wants to know, uh, you said the BAFTA award is much heavier. Do you have other awards to compare with? <laughs> I have a Young Entertainer Award That's that cool. I got last year for a film I did. And that is, like, 10 or 15 pounds. Mm-hmm. You could use it. If there was an intruder in your house, mm-hmm. you'd have a weapon. I think the the, like... Those big award show ones. Because I've held an Emmy before and that thing's heavy. They're very Very heavy. heavy. Like, yeah. Very. And they have to ship them to you. You can't just take them home. Uh Like, I think uh, the Annapurna and Giant Sparrow team got their BAFTA, like, two months after. Because they have to engrave it. And then they have to, like, Yeah, yeah. Because they don't actually have them. Yeah. Yeah. And then it takes forever because it's darn heavy. I I got a certificate because for the... um, the web series I did like won an Emmy for like the transmedia aspect, but we were able to like if we wanted pay to get a certificate sent to us That's that says really cool. that you were on it. And so I have a certificate that is very light because it is paper. Yeah, I have <laughs> my my thing from the BAFTA. I got a BAFTA nominee certificate. Oh, that's cool. That came in. That was light. That's so. cool. I love I have that. To frame it still. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, Emmy is that's darn cool. Yeah. Well, it's it was it was an amazing experience. It was great like I'm sure it was sim- it was similar to like you know I'm like looking around and I was like oh there's Seth Green oh like there's all okay yeah ah. it's weird when you get thrown in that situation yeah and you're like I'm here I must act normal yeah it's very hard to do that very it can be yeah Rainbow Scape wants to know do you want to build a snowman always <laughs> I actually I'm not a huge cold person I I like I like the warm that's why I like California yeah so. yeah well, you put enough layers on, you can yeah. weather any weather. Weather any storm, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, Allie wants, an, she has another question. Would you rather have to go to the bathroom in a giant litter box in your house or anywhere you want but only outside? Allie. <laughs> hmm, that's also a good question. Um, I grew up with cats and I don't like emptying the litter box, mm. so I have to stay outside. <laughs> Yeah. Emptying litter boxes is rough. Yeah. Right, Flitwick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it, you spoiled little <laughs> cat without opposable thumbs. <laughs> um, let's see. We got an uh well, you said that you started acting when you were about seven, right? Okay. Yeah. That's about seven. All right. So that was your question, Nadine, is about your answer is about seven. And um I'm gonna take this this will be the last one. Willis wants to know who your favorite Star Wars character is. Oh gosh, um, it's a. I love Leia. Mm. She's so cool. She's so cool. I also really love Ray, but mm-hmm. but Leia's like, she's like OG she's the OG. Cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So and I mean, just Carrie Fisher is an amazing. Yeah, yeah. I I like that that hit me hard. When oh she yeah, passed, so yeah. Love her. I see. Yeah, you should, you got stickers of her in your water bottle. I do because I got it Clexicon. <laughs> nice. So. Woo! I don't, I can't remember who the artist is, but yeah, I'm obsessed. Love it. Love it. Okay, I lied because I just saw two really good questions. Um, <laughs> uh, Ali said, my serious question, what's an aspect of your career you, bleh, what's an aspect, I talk for a living, what's an <laughs> aspect of your career that you like more than you thought you would? Voiceover. Cool. I, I, I mean, I grew up as a singer, so I thought I'd be like fine at it but I didn't think it was going to be like something I would really love Mm -hmm. and being in the booth is one of my favorite things that's awesome like I I I love doing every aspect of of acting um 
Yeah, I love it. I love I love being in the booth. That's and, great. Like, it's so intimate. It is because you're you're almost always alone with like mm-hmm. there's not anyone else and you're just doing your thing, working yeah. on your craft. Exactly, and it's the most imagination based mm-hmm. too. And yeah, I, I like that. I love that a lot. Yeah, agreed. That's yeah. very cool. Okay, and then. WN once says, I feel like we're going in the right direction for women representation on screen, but do you have thoughts on women behind the camera, writing, directing, etc.? I think we're moving towards it. Mm-hmm. I think we need a lot more. I think when people say, because I've seen a, I've seen this a couple times online where they'll say, why didn't you hire a woman to like big studio? And they say, we can't find any. Where are you looking? Did you try? Did you look at Craigslist? <laughs> because they're there. They're there. So I think it's important. Um, and I've been lucky enough to be meeting a lot of amazing female creators. I'm I myself am diving into writing. So I think Great. it's important. So I think we're I think we're slowly but surely getting there. We need more Patty Jenkins in the world. Yeah. So we're getting there. Yeah. Faster, please, though. Yeah, agreed. I wish I I wish I could contribute by knowing how to do any of those things or enjoying writing, but I don't. But maybe I'll get there. Like, it's just it's not time for me to write yet. It's not part of my plan currently. That's the thing. And it takes – some people it won't be. I am very lucky that I date a filmmaker that I can hand them to and I say – is this garbage? And they'll get tell me honestly. So I love that. I love yeah. that. Okay. That, that's nice. All right. Great. And is there anywhere we can find her stuff? Like, do you want to yes. plug? Her? Oh, yeah. Demi might be watching. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend is Demi Santone, a filmmaker extraordinaire. She is on Instagram at, uh, oh, gosh, her handle is at Demi Santoni. Uh, she misspelled her name as a joke, and now she's has to keep her handle. Great. So that's at D E M I underscore S A N T O N Y on Instagram. Okay. And then I think it links to her Vimeo on there as Great. well. Perfect. So she's got a film on the circuit right now called Spellbound, that's and she's cool. finishing. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Sign me up for witchy stuff. I, it's actually it's actually based on a Susie and the Banshee song. Okay. Well, so, it's. But still it's, it's sign great. me up for witchy I, stuff. Yeah, I know. Same here. <laughs> I just finished watching Sabrina season two. I haven't gotten to that yet. Oh, okay. so good. My friend Gavin is on it, and I feel obsessed with it. Um, anyway, and she's got another film right now that she's finishing up called Ellie with okay. Katra. Lovely. Katra stars in it. So Awesome. Yes. Go follow her. Give her some love. Give some filmmaking women love. Yes, please. <laughs> awesome. So... Thank you so much for coming on and doing this interview. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play the game off podcast. We're gonna play mm-hmm. some What Remains of Edith Finch. Um, if you'd like to check that out, uh, if you'd want to check out the gameplay, go to my Twitch um, at www.twitch.tv slash Abraham underscore Lincoln, and the video will be there. And then if it's not, it'll be on my YouTube, which is YouTube slash Dan Hutton. But thank you so much for being here. It was really fun to catch up with you and kind of delve into your backstory. And This is a blast. It was a lot of fun, and I'm really excited to play the game. Me too. Um, and give it one more time. Tell them where to find you. Uh, on Instagram, at Valerie Rose Loman. On Twitter, at Valerie Loman. On Facebook, at Valerie Rose Loman. And on YouTube, Valerie Rose Loman. I think that's all of them. Awesome. There we go. And uh, I'm Diane Hutton, and you can find me at Diane Hutton on Twitter, at Abraham underscore Lincoln on both Twitch and Instagram. And that about wraps this up, and we'll see you. See you. I won't ever see you, but uh, maybe you'll hear us uh, sometime soon with another awesome guest. Yay. Thank you again. Of course. Thank you. Perfect. Dearest listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to the very first episode of Gaming and Gabbing. Follow me at Dabraham underscore Lincoln on Twitch to watch me play the games of my guests live. Please tune in for the next episode where I interview David Yaroveski, director of the anti-superhero movie Brightburn. And remember, live your best nerd life.